Okay, so I noticed a trend on social media lately where all these soft and moody images are making waves. And I think that partially has to do with the fact that film has become really popular over these last couple of years. And I think a lot of people trying to experiment with kind of that look now that film is coming back. And why not try to do that with your digital camera? So this has been a type of photography that I've been into for a while now, and it's something that I've been shooting for, I would say about two or so odd years now. So I figured with this video, I could actually kind of help you guys if you guys are interested in this type of photography and kind of give you guys my tips and tricks and kind of tell you guys how I do them. So uh, with all that being said, this is going to be my five tips to shoot soft or moody images. This list is not numbered like in any order, by the way. Um, I'm just gonna go from five to one. But anyways, let's get into it. Okay, so tip five is gonna be shoot wide open. So if you are a photographer, you already know what I'm talking about, but if you are not, I am talking about shooting with an aperture range anywhere between f2 to f0.95 if you have a lens that goes that far. And the reason why you wanna shoot like this is because you are going to get a lot of areas in the photograph that are gonna be slightly out of focus. You know, if you're shooting with an f1.8 and you're shooting a portrait, obviously the face is gonna be in focus, but everything else around it is gonna be really soft. What I like to do is I like to shoot anywhere between 1.8 to 1.4 and uh, I'll shoot full bodies like that. And obviously the whole body is not gonna be in focus, only a portion of it will. But what I like about shooting with the shallow depth of field is the fact that even when you are focusing on the face, there is gonna be pieces of it that are not perfectly in focus. And I don't know, there's something really nice about it and I really enjoy the look of it. So that's gonna be tip. Five. Okay, so tip number four is going to be using prisms and using random objects. So what I mean by this is that uh, if you have something like, you know, like those glass prisms and stuff, they do sell them for like photography. You can buy one of those and you could use those for like weird flare effects, so on and so forth. But what I like to do is I have this glass prism here. Um, this actually isn't made for photography at all. It's made as a paperweight and I actually picked it up at my local uh, antique store and I don't know, I liked it. I just liked the look of it really, but I started playing with it in one of my photo shoots and ever since then I've just loved it. And the reason being is because I could actually shoot right through it. And when I shoot like that, it just, I don't know, it softens the image and it also just adds some weird effects to the image as well. Um, on the screen, you're probably looking at a couple of images that I shot with the prism. And uh, once again, this isn't actually made for photography. I actually just bought it just kind of on the whim because I like to add random objects to my shoots as well. And what I mean by random objects is even on my desk here, I have a piece of trash. Like this is from something that I ate earlier and uh, I would probably use this in a photo shoot. And how would you ask? Well, when you're taking a photo, you're gonna point the lens at the person. And what I do is I like to take pieces of just randomness and throw it to the sides of the lens. And what that does is it adds like a weird, like kind of side effect. It's, it's almost like a flare to the image itself. And what I like to do and what I like to play with is when I'm out shooting randomly, I'll just like pick up like a piece of grass or something like that, add it to the front of the image. And if it's so close to the lens, the lens isn't gonna focus on it no matter what. So what I like to do is I like to throw that in front of people's faces, so on and so forth, where pieces of their body or even their face are out of focus. And I did that purposely. So like I said, you could just grab random stuff and you could also use that for your photo shoot. Just be careful, don't pick up any needles or anything like that. Okay, so tip number four is gonna be use vintage lenses. So this is pretty obvious as kind of the modern day in technology, all these lenses are super pristine, they're made perfectly, they're made in giant factories where all the robots and the machinery is just absolutely perfect. The glass is absolutely perfect. You know, you could spend $5,000 on a lens and it is just optically amazing, right? Well, if you want softer images, obviously you want to use something that's really probably not that great. And like what I mean by use vintage lenses is go to your local antique store, go to your local thrift store, pick up a random lens that you just see. And as long as there's no like fungus or anything growing inside of it, pick it up, 
see if you could adapt it to your camera and definitely try to shoot with it. You could get a lot of really cool images like that. Some of the images I'm gonna throw up on screen right now were actually taken with this 50 millimeter f1.8 lens that I originally bought for this Canon AE-1P. So that's just one other avenue that you could take is, you know, once again, you could go to your local whatever and pick up a really cheap lens, adapt it to your camera, and you might get some really cool kind of looks with it. Okay, so tip number two is really an obvious one and this is just use diffusion filters now I don't have any diffusion filters myself and that's because I've never really had a use for them I'm playing around with more video now I plan on getting like a black pro mist uh, I think it's one four diffusion filter maybe I'm getting that wrong I don't know I'll put it on screen right here I want to get one of those just because you could get like a really dreamy kind of look just by popping a filter on your camera. I know Moment just made a filter called like the Cine Bloom, and you could add, add that to your photo camera as well and take pictures with it. I mean, why not? It's a filter. So um, that's going to be tip number two. It's a really simple one. Just go pick up a diffusion filter and just try out some new experimentation with that. Tip number one is going to be just shoot film. Um, I am not shilling for film by any means. This is not really a film channel, but I do talk about photography a lot on here. And I think film is just kind of the easiest way to go with getting softer looking images and kind of moody looking images because you don't really know what you're getting when you're shooting it. And when it comes back, it's really easy to kind of manipulate it a little bit further. And I think the reason why film is so soft. Now, I am not a scientist. I am not a master of photography or anything like that but I think the reason being is because once again it has to do with the old vintage lenses now these lenses are not optically perfect you know they were made differently than they are now hell I even have a Pentax 6x7 that has an old lens um, it's the 105 f 2.4 I think it is and that one actually has like radiation built inside of it like it has some weird chem I don't know anyways the lens is like basically gold and it's really really cool looking and it adds just like an effect to itself um there's just something about old vintage lenses that I think does a bigger thing than I think a lot of people realize so once again I'm going to go back to tip number three and say use vintage lenses as well and uh, if you want something a little bit simpler just pick up some film grab an old camera and shoot that and you'll probably get some soft images right out the box uh, but anyways, that's going to be the end of my video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you guys enjoyed my tips. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, some of the images that I put up on screen as well as some of the videos. This has been something that uh, I've been kind of thinking about making for a while, but I guess since the popularity of kind of these images has kind of went up, I might as well put my part into the atmosphere and I hope that people enjoy it. So with all that being said, though, guys, thank you guys for watching my videos. Thank you guys for the continued support. Thank you guys for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. We're almost to a thousand and that would be awesome to end 2020 at a high note instead of the terribleness that has been 2020 so far. But anyways, with all that being said, I'm done talking for now. I will see you guys in the next video and I will talk to you guys. then. So see ya. Bye. The last thing I want to say is definitely go check out my Instagram account. If you guys haven't followed me already, please do so. Uh, I try to post, you know, photos every single week. I try to post the new things that are coming up. Um, definitely on my story for sure. Uh, but if you guys aren't doing that, please go give me a follow. I'd really appreciate it. And if you guys are not already subscribed to my YouTube account, definitely go subscribe. Uh, I try to upload videos every single week. And uh, ring the bell icon too. Uh, that way you guys get notified every single time I upload a video. Uh, but that's going to be the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching again, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. So, see ya. Bye.